Hello everybody, welcome back to Zombie Zoology. I'm Zombie Zebra and today we are talking about what kind of accommodations you can ask for in an academic setting. If you are like me, I spent a large portion of my life undiagnosed. So by the time I got to my sophomore year of college and actually had a diagnosis, I was very overwhelmed when I was finally asked that question, what accommodations do you need? Because I had no idea. I had spent so long being told I was a bullshitter or I was overdramatic, or I was gaming the system, that once someone actually asked me what I needed, I couldn't figure out what to say because everything I wanted to say felt like more bullshitting. So I'm going to give you a list today of things I wish I had asked for. Things that I did somewhat actually ask for and things that I didn't feel I had a right to or I didn't feel like I could ask for or that I did ask for and wasn't honored. This is my ideal list of accommodations and things that I think you should ask for if you're in similar situations to me. Hopefully these can give you some ideas if you're getting ready to have to meet with a disability coordinator. So first piece of advice is most cities will have disability advocacy groups. I highly recommend that you get in contact with them if that is an option because disability services will often say they're advocating for you, but there's lots of times when it really feels more like you're having to fight them for accommodations. And really it's more like you're having to fight the university for accommodations, but at least in my experience I didn't really get a warm and fuzzy vibe. I got more of a I need to prove my disability to you. And as someone with an invisible disability, that's very, very frightening because it's really easy to be afraid it's just going to be another person calling you a fake. So if you get in touch with the disability advocacy group, they might have somebody who can get informed of your situation and come to the meeting for you. And this is going to be someone who's going to be even more familiar with possible accommodations than I am. And it'll also give you that kind of legitimacy oomph that you may need to be taken seriously. The unfortunate, reality, the unfortunate reality is lots of times people with invisible disabilities are not taken seriously, both by the world and disability services and universities. So that's advice number one. Uh, next thing is that there are going to be things they tell you that they can't do. And my advice to that is to let them know what then you cannot do. My, my particular university that I went to, uh, I remember when I was touring my freshman year, or before my freshman year when I was trying to decide if I wanted to go there, I was told they had a service to help you get around campus if you, you know, either felt scared at night or were disabled in some way. At the time that didn't affect me because I knew I was in pain all the time, but I thought it was normal. So I didn't think of myself as needing that, but it was a good thing to know, especially as a woman on a college campus, having a, some people who can shuttle you where you need to go, that's really nice especially because our campus, it didn't have a road through it or anything. So unless you wanted to drive around and there wasn't really parking on campus, so you'd have to park kind of off campus and walk on. And so in general, like you really had to do a lot of walking and it was on a hill. It was just really miserable. But uh, actually a little bit into my freshman year, I fractured my ankle and I called the police department, which was supposedly um, in charge of helping students get to point A to point B and was very rudely told that they were uh, not a taxi service. And it was particularly off-putting because actually a teacher, I had emailed them and said, like, I can't physically walk to class today. And they had said, oh, call uh, the police department and they'll get you here. And I called the police department and that's the response I got. So, so if you end up in a situation where you're saying, I need this accommodation, and they tell you no, and they tell you we can't do that, you tell them, well, then I can't get to class because as much as you have to conform to their reality and you have to conform to what's realistic for them, they have to conform to what's realistic for you. If you're not going to be able to get to class without help, tell them that because that was my situation and when they told me no, I just took it because I felt like, well, they think I'm being unreasonable, I'll stop. But I ended up dropping out of school because I could not physically get to class. And that's really unfortunate. No one should have to go through that. If you are paying $50,000 a year to go to a university, you should be able to go to that university. That is a service you are paying for. I know it can be really hard and it can be really easy to be afraid of being unreasonable, but at the end of the day, you're your own greatest advocate and you need to do yourself justice because you deserve an education just as much as an able-bodied person. Another accommodation I recommend you ask for if you have any sort of spine trouble or any pain sitting is that you have a chair with adequate back support. Um, the university I went to, most of the classrooms were just those like metal chairs connected to the desk 
and they were super hard for me to get in and out in and out of they were super painful for me to sit in and i wish looking back i had been forward thinking enough to say hey i need to have a chair with adequate back support in the classrooms where i take classes because if i had had chairs that could actually help hold me up, I would have been able to focus in class a lot better. I wouldn't have been in such severe pain. I had to wedge myself in the back corner of every classroom so that I would have a wall to rest my head up against. And it severely impacted the amount I was able to take in in classes because it's really hard to focus if you're in pain. So don't let yourself be afraid of asking for that. Universities make a lot of money. They got lots of very nice chairs. You can ask for one to be in the classroom where you need to work. If you have any trouble testing because your fingers are weak and you have issues writing, I recommend that you ask for computer use, either of your own laptop or of a computer lab's computer. And this is something that universities are used to doing for people either with dysgraphia or lots of universities will just let stuff happen on the computers anyways. So that's a really easy home run one that you can ask for. Note takers. Some universities will employ note takers so that if you're somebody who either misses class often or has difficulty taking notes because of your fingers or just has really bad brain fog and has difficulty remembering lessons, getting somebody to take notes for you or even having disability services designate you a note taker for all of your classes is a really ideal situation. Off of that, I really wish that more disability services would get into recording classes, recording lectures, or even Skyping students into it because there were lots of days in university when I would feel perfectly fine to learn, but I could not get up and go to class, largely because of the shuttle situation we talked about earlier. But I was stuck in bed, but totally ready to learn. Unfortunately, there wasn't any sort of system in place in my university where you could Skype into classes or anything like that, unless you had an individual teacher who was cool with it. Now, speaking about individual teachers, there are some universities where disability departments will say, you know, we can recommend these things, but we can't make the teachers follow them. And frankly, that is so stupid. What if you are paying an institution as much as you have to pay to go to college in America, you are entitled to the accommodations that disability services says that you need. So if you end up in a class, I don't, I, I, at this point, I can't even so much give you advice for what to do if a teacher tries to deny you services, because apparently they have the right to do that in America. But I can say that, you know, if you do find a teacher who is really solid about accommodating you, I recommend you stick with that teacher for as many classes as you can. Because in my experience, the teacher and the teacher's willingness to accommodate you has way more to do with your success in a class than the subject matter or the difficulty of the class. The number one thing that stood in my way of succeeding in university was how little they were willing to accommodate me. And I really hope I can go back to school at some point to a university that has more experience working with disabled students. Whether that's online university, whether that's somewhere I'll eventually be in person, I don't know. But I guess this video is partially for myself, so I'll be better at advocating for myself next time. The next thing I recommend that you advocate for is excused absences. This is something that my university did actually do for me, but this is also something where they said, you know, we can recommend this, but the teachers may not follow it. So there were several classes where even though I was told I would get excused absences, I still had them counted against me. And I was told that there would be teachers who would be willing to, you know, go over lessons with me if I missed them, but that wasn't actually the case. I got lots of teachers who were very annoyed with me and were very put upon that I would dare to miss their class. And that's, it's really insulting because it really underplays the amount of struggle you have to go to to get there every day. And it's amazing how personally some people can take your disability and it really sucks if that happens. So if you're a teacher, I highly recommend that you do some research into visible disabilities and disabilities in general and the way it can affect your students' learning. You learn all about learning differences, try learning all about physical differences as well. It'll make a world of difference. There are more disabled people out there than you think. If you can't tell, I've got a little bit of salt about my old university. I think it would have been a great place to be if I was able-bodied, but I'm not, so it wasn't. And uh, that's unfortunate. I probably have other times it'll be mentioned. I'm sure it's, you know, it doesn't take long to figure out what university I went to. Um, there, are so, there are lots of lovely people in the administration, lovely people in the faculty, but unfortunately it only takes a couple bad apples to really ruin the bunch in that one, so. Uh, my disability was highly disrespected both in my department and overall, which is why I'm not there anymore. And uh, that is for the better. And 
I learned a lot what not to want in an, a learning environment, a living environment, all sorts of things. So it was an overall good experience. And I have no problem being real about it online because if someone's going to get mad at me for, you know, talking about ways my disability was mistreated, then that's that person's problem, not mine. Uh, my kind of general outlook is if you don't want me to talk about the way you mistreated me, don't mistreat me. There are lots of universities, mine in particular, I know required you to live on campus for three years and therefore also required you to have a meal plan with them for three years. This was a huge problem for me because I had a lot of digestion issues and at the time they were undiagnosed. Now that I have a diagnosis, I could probably have asked for this kind of accommodation easier. But um, if you suffer from any sort of gastroparesis, digestional issues, there are ways you can get doctor's notes for that and either live off campus so you can prepare your own food and not be trapped in the dining system or have some sort of you know multi-fridge system in your room to uh, give yourself your best possible chance at getting the nutrition you need. So don't forget to think about nutrition when you're thinking about um, accommodations. I think there's also probably a way if you still wanted to live on campus to just not have to have a meal plan so that you able, are able to keep that money and work on your own nutrition. But these are all things you have to ask for because the university is all about trapping you into spending as much money on them as possible. But don't let them bully you into spending money that is actually going to hurt you. Because uh, university dying is not ideal if you have any sort of digestive issue at all. Not really sorry for how salty this video got. Until next time, remember to advocate for yourself and hoard those spoons, guys.